Hello everybody, Whitney Magnuson here, live with Unity Stamp Company. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, so yesterday I was live and I was sharing our brand new adhesive transfers. So if you didn't see that video, you can go ahead and watch the replay on that and see how these work. But it kind of raised the question, what to do with all of these little negative pieces that you get. And so I'm gonna show you how you can use these to get like even more um, bang for your buck when you buy these adhesive um, transfers. So usually with mine, I just kind of keep them all in like a little area and then, um, you know, when I have time, I might do the negatives and then kind of look through there with my scraps and incorporate into card making. Um, so they are a good thing to keep because you never know. And us crafters, we got to look out for each other and like hoard all the crafty supplies, right? So uh, we came out with four new adhesive transfers. I'm going to show you how to use that too with the bonus card today. Um, and we're just going to have some fun. So let's get started. Let's put it down to project cam and I'm going to show you guys these designs. And then I'll pull out my cards from yesterday too so you guys can see what those looked like. Right. Okay, so yesterday I made a couple of cards just sharing with you how to use these. Um, and this is what it turned out like. So you can use these transfers um, with no heat. And I used some vellum here over a awesome kind of ombre stamp background. Here it is on regular cardstock and colored up with some Copics. And then you can do it directly over the top of your watercolor images on watercolor paper. Or you can put it on top of acetate as well. So, so many possibilities with these. I love these um, adhesive transfers. Uh, most of ours are sentiment designs, which pair perfectly with our stamps. Um, I absolutely love them. So I'm going to share with you guys today just how you use these, how you can get um, a card from the negative, and then a bonus card too because we have an awesome sale featuring like all of our bestsellers of all time and I had to pull out one of my favorite stamps of all time and create with it. So here are the designs. Today I think I'm going to do Blooming Friendship because I love this one so much and it's really easy to work with and create something out of the negatives, especially with these awesome floral little images. So here is the card duo we're gonna do today. So it's kind of a positive and a negative here. Um, two cards, kind of one little foiled image. Um, we'll have Nick zoom in a little bit so you guys can see the detail on that. What's fun about these adhesive transfers is they are used with no heat, just pressure. And I love how you can grab your black cardstock or dark colored cardstock and add these foil details over the top and it's gonna just pop. So I love, love, love that. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do this. Two cards from one um, foil design here. So we're gonna grab Blooming Friendship. That's what I'm using today. And for the first one, we this is the original. So we'll start with the original and I'll show you how this works. So I'm just going to grab a sheet of black cardstock here and I die cut mine out with our scallop and rectangle nesting die set. It is a favorite. Um, oh, got a little water on my things. Did you see Jaleesa's question? What was her question? She's wondering if you can laminate the printed part of the adhesive transfers. Okay, so I tried that because in my mind, so what she's talking about is, um, let me just pull one out of my garbage here. So when you're done um, transferring the adhesive, you have this left over. And in my mind, I was like, I wonder if this is printed with toner ink and if I can put this through the heat laminator and... Um, get a foil design it didn't work so no it didn't work for me <laughs> maybe you can get it to work and you can school us all all right so I'm gonna grab my hello friend so in each package you get two sheets of designs and they come on acetate like so and um, so I kind of want to do like a mirror image like floral thing and I think we'll do this corner one on the top I think it's pretty cute 
So to use these, we are going to just cut out the image, cut around the image like so. And I'm going to use two of mine because I'm feeling extra. All right. So we got that. And then let's grab the sentiment, wishing you a happy birthday. So there's all the elements we're going to use. So now what we're going to do is set these um, on our cardstock, kind of arrange it how we want. Just eyeball it here and see what I'm liking. I think that's good. And I want to do like almost like a little mirror image. So, okay, so I'm going to do some two tone foiling. So first we're going to do these ones. So. To transfer these adhesive transfers onto your cardstock, you're going to take the thin backing off, like so, carefully. You can toss that. And then we're going to take our design. You don't want to touch the um, black part because um, you'll disrupt the adhesive. So you're just going to set that down where you want it. You don't need to rub or anything like that. Just gently set it down. And then we're going to do the same thing with this side. We're going to pull off the backing. And then we are going to place our floral on here. Mine are overlapping a little bit because I'm not going to use my full floral. Um, you can do whatever you want. So now this is a no heat floral, so we're, or no heat. Um, foiling, so we're just going to sandwich this. I have two little mini plates that I use for my die cutting machines. So you can use a die cutting machine, anything manual or automatic, it works just fine. Um, or you can use a laminator as well if you want. I don't have very good results with it on hot, but if you use like the cold setting, I've had really excellent results. So just something to apply that pressure. All right, so now we're going to peel this off and that image has perfectly transferred onto our cardstock, like so. Love that. I'm gonna grab my, this is just kind of like a turquoise um, foil, and we're gonna put that right over the top, pretty side up, and we're gonna sandwich it back in our plates here and add pressure, apply pressure, and then it's going to leave the most magical foiled designs. All right. So we'll pull this out. We can peel off. Look at that peel and reveal, you guys. Like, isn't that gorgeous? And then we have this leftover. All right, so we're gonna use this for our next card. I'm gonna just set that aside. All right, so I am loving how that turned out. We wanna do kind of a two-tone foil look, so I wanna do the sentiment in another color. So we're gonna just grab this and put this down where we want it. Perfect. Sandwich it, apply that pressure. I'm using a Spellbinders Platinum die cutting machine. I don't have to put any shims or anything in mine, but depending on your die cutting machine, you might need to add some more paper for shims or, um, you know, take away just to get the perfect pressure. But mine is pretty accurate. All right, so there is our sentiment. And I'm going to grab my silver shattered glass here because I love the silver shattered glass. It is so pretty. We have so many colors of foils, so um, be sure to grab all your favorites when you grab these. Okay, so there's our silver shattered glass. We'll sandwich this back through. I didn't know that Nick is doing like my face. I gotta, I gotta make sure that I'm not, you know, my face isn't resting in like a mean, mean look or something. All right, here's that peel and reveal. How awesome is that? And we're going to keep this too because we're going to use this to make another card. All right, so here's our first one. 
So now we're going to do the mirror image of this. So what we need to do that is we are going to need to do some heat foiling. So our adhesive transfers are no heat applied with just um, pressure. But if you want to use the negatives, you do need a hot laminator. So I want to just make that clear just so you're not confused like about that. No heat for the adhesive transfers. Negatives need heat. So to use the negatives, you're going to need these toner sheets. And what they are is black sheets of cardstock that are solid toner ink printed. So basically it has to be these sheets because when the toner sheets go through the hot laminator, they're heat activated and it uh, allows the foil to adhere to our toner. So that is key. You got to keep that in mind. <laughs> All right. So we're going to take and we're gonna do a little hot laminator sandwich. So for my sandwich, for my hot laminator, I always take a little piece of uh, parchment, and this does come inside of your um, toner sheets. You always get a little piece of parchment. So, or you can just use parchment from your kitchen. Make sure it's not wax paper, it's gotta be parchment. And we are going to make a sandwich. So we're gonna do our toner paper, black side up, then we're going to grab our um, foil and we're just going to position this on here where we want it, pretty side up. And we are going to run this through the laminator, fold side in first, because this is going to prevent um, any like jams or anything like that from happening. Um, so I'm just going to run this through the laminator. My hot laminator is off camera. It's been heating up for a little while. I use a Royal Sovereign laminator and it is from Amazon. And so um, if you're on the market for one, it's around $20. So for the sentiment, we're gonna do the same thing. I have a little strip of toner uh, paper just cut and we're gonna put this right over the top. See if it's coming out and it is. Hopefully you don't have it on my face. <laughs> okay, so here you were. <laughs> Stop <laughs> this madness. Nobody needs to see my full body. Okay, so um, this, this is just user error. Like if you have any wrinkles or anything in your foil, you're going to get little um, imperfections. So just keep that in mind. I am still going to use this card and it's going to be great for me. But if that bothers you, just make sure that um, your foil has no folds in it and your parchment has no folds in it and that prevents that. All right. So now you see we have a solid like turquoisey look here. Um, we could leave the florals black. That's just fine. I am not going to because I want the foils to be, or the flowers to be like double foiled and I wanted to show you guys this fun technique. So you can keep foiling and get a two-tone look on the negative. So wherever the black is, that means that um, the foil didn't transfer there and so you can take your foil and foil again. I wonder if I have to grab like a whole new sheet of this. Yes, I do. I'm trying to like be. Well, I don't have the one I want, so we'll just use a different one. No big deal. I'll use a different silver. All right. I just think that the silver shattered glass is a little bit more magical, but that's okay. Just gonna use this silver hologram and we're gonna take our sandwich, we're gonna put this foil pretty side up and now the silver is gonna to adhere to everywhere where the black was. So this is kind of a fun um, way that you can get a two-tone look with the negative. All right, we'll get this ready for the next one. We could have put that in there with it, but oh well. And we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna do some double foiling. So I'm just gonna make sure that after we're done with that, I have some blue cut so we can do our letters blue and all the outside around it will be that silver. All right, Nick, don't. <laughs> you did it, didn't you?
Okay, so here is this look. So when we peel this off, all of the, our florals are gonna be this pretty silver color now. How cool is that? So two tones there. Um, once you get into the you know negatives, it gets a little distorted, but I mean, this one's still good. I probably could get another impression out of that, but um, I'm, I'm just not going to. All right, so let's do our sentiment. Same thing, this is our toner paper. We're gonna take our negative that we used for our first card, sandwich it in there, and uh, put this through the hot laminator. And while we're waiting, I always think it looks better when these are die cut, so let's do that while we're waiting. So it looks like the other one. That's cute, perfect. We'll run this through a die cutting machine. I am using the scallop and rectangle nesting die set um, to die cut this out. And I believe they are still in stock um, on the website. I know they go really fast, but I'm pretty sure they're still in stock. And I actually like how this one filled in. Like when I made that mistake, so my foil um, like curled up. I actually don't mind that. So there's that look. All right, let's check out our sentiment. This peel and reveal on this. I love how like every bit of foil is used. <laughs> so awesome. All right, let's, we could leave it like this so the letters are black but I wanna show you guys the double foiling effect. So I'm gonna take that blue, put it right over the top and run this through one more time. All right, I think we had some questions. Um, I frequently have problems with wrinkling when I run the foil through my laminator, any suggestions? So my suggestions would be to make sure that your parchment or whatever um, kind of pocket you're using is not um, like wrinkled in any way. Make sure it's you know perfectly straight, no wrinkles, no creases. The other thing is your foil. Make sure that when you store your foil, you're putting it like back in here nice so it doesn't get um, all like, like if there's anything on here, like if I were to use this, it's not gonna transfer. So just make sure that your foil is not wrinkled or anything like that you're storing it nice back in here the other thing you could try is applying more pressure and so um, when you're doing your pocket right now all i'm doing is this toner um, sheet and the foil if you wanted and you need more pressure you can grab cardstock and just test it out so start with one sheet of cardstock and see if that's enough pressure to get a better impression and just keep adding until you like the impressions certain laminators are gonna just need a little bit more pressure so all right let's take a peek at this sentiment now we'll do the peel and reveal there i love that so now we have the blue letters, I could probably use this one again. That actually looks really good. Um, so you can see how you could keep going down the rabbit hole using all those negatives and um, all your like foils and getting the most bang for your buck. So this um, parchment piece here, this is what I meant by like really straight, like make sure none of your corners are flipped over or anything like that. It will affect the way that it transfers. All right, let's go ahead and, oh, I wanted to show you guys what you could do with this too. So I love when things are like perfectly coordinating. And so um, for this one, I have a black sheet of cardstock here that I die cut out. And we're gonna assemble this one like that. But for this one, I was like, oh, you know what? We need some blue cardstock. So let's do that. I'm gonna show you how you can make like almost your own foiled or like near cardstock. So I'm just taking an A2 sheet of um, this toner cardstock. And this is one of my favorite things to do to just get like a custom colored um, cardstock that's sparkly, it's gonna match the rest of my card or like foil details. So we're gonna run this back through the laminator and so we get a solid sheet that we can use to um, complete our card. All right, 
So, just gonna show you what this ends up looking like. So here is the first one. So this is using the originals, just the transfers. This is a no heat version. I added some little splatters on here with um, some metallic paints that we have in our shop. And then this is that, um, that full sheet of cardstock that I'm just about to pull out of the laminator here. And um, you can see the peel and reveal on that. But here's the first one. All right. And here's what the cardstock looks like before it's all die cut and everything. This is always like so satisfying to me because it takes like every little bit of foil off. So now you have the perfect matching cardstock for our card here. So there's what that ends up looking like. So now the negative that we made is like this. So uh, we have the blue solid background, we have the silver florals, and the blue and silver sentiment. So positive and negative foiling, very, very fun and easy to do. You can get two cards from basically one um, adhesive transfer design. And um, I think they turn out really fun. This would be a great um, way to make like a card set for a non-crafty friend. Um, so they can have cards to send to their friends. Um, just a bunch of different colors. I'm really excited to try some different colors with this. And I love how the foil pops off the black cardstock too. Um, so Mary asked, am I using toner cardstock? So when we're using the negatives like this, we do use the toner cardstock. So on our negative, yes, I'm using heat, a heat laminator and toner cardstock. On the original, this was a no heat version and um, just kind of applying pressure. Um, and you can see in more detail how to use these uh, no heat adhesive transfers on yesterday's video. And I also am gonna do one other card to just share with you how you can um, use them again but I just really wanted to show you guys how to use those negatives because I think it's kind of cool. All right, so I want to do one more card here. This one's going to be featuring um, a stamp set that is one of my like all-time favorites. So we have an amazing sale happening right now, and um, Angela actually went through and she compiled a list of the top best sellers of all time for our stamps and they're all on sale right now at like really really good in action you just have to see it in action it's so fun to color up um, so we're gonna use you are forever beautiful and then this fun kind of text stamp is another one of my favorites and it is from the set hug and this is by Jolande and um, I love this. It kind of has some mixed media style elements if you're into that. If you aren't so much into mixed media, I have seen some really great clean and simple cards using this set as well. So you can use it to whatever matches your personal crafty style. All right, so let's get going on this card. We're going to grab You Are Forever Beautiful to start with. So here's that stamp set. And then I die cut out my panels with our scallop and rectangle nesting die set. So I have a black sheet of cardstock that's going to be our matting. This is a white sheet of watercolor paper. I'm using Canson XL watercolor paper because we are going to do a little bit of watercoloring for those florals. All right. So I already have my stamp set up in my Misty. So we can get that all stamped out and good to go. I'm just using a little bit of post-it tape to hold my panel in place. And I am using a watercolor friendly ink today. So I'm using blackout detail ink. And we're just gonna ink this on up. And watch how awesome this stamp is. It is so pretty, just simply stamped on um, like craft cardstock too, just black on craft. Gorgeous, gorgeous by Angie Blom. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, 
She is one of our artists that have been with us for a very long time. So she has a variety of stamps. And I would guess there's quite a few of hers that are um, a part of the bestseller sales. So you want to check that out. All right. So I like my stamped images to be like super duper dark. Not necessary. The first time was pretty perfect. But if you have a misty, why not? All right, I'm just going to clean off my stamp here so it's all ready for the next time. All right, let's pull this out. So I just love all of the detail of this stamp. It is just gorgeous. All right, so we're going to do just some easy, simple watercolor. Um, I'm just going to be using like three colors here and keeping it real simple and um, a water brush with a little bit of water on the side to like blend with. So what I like to do is kind of go like petal by petal. So what I'm gonna start with is like applying the water down on a petal. Then I'm gonna grab my water-based marker. For me, that's the Karen Brush Marker Pro. And I am going to apply the pigment to the inside part of the petal where I feel it would be darkest and then we'll blend out. So I like to kind of add a layer of water first and then kind of add that pigment because um, the water there will pull the pigment and it just makes it look a little bit more blended. It almost blends itself when you do that. So here's like one of the folds and to me this would be dark so I'm adding quite a bit of that part perfect and just repeating this process so this is just going to be kind of a watercolory video so you can sit back and relax or you can ask questions about foiling if you have any foiling or watercolor questions, I'll answer them now. So just go ahead and put those in the comments and then I'll be watching for them as we go. Or even yesterday's like adhesive uh, transfers, how to use those. I, I am here to answer it all. So this technique is just, um, it's pretty easy just kind of applying that water, applying the pigment and letting the water um, kind of blend out that pigment on its own. I want like the tips to be a little bit lighter. So I'm making sure that I'm not blending like completely so the petals all one color. So we get like a nice kind of blended look. All right. Oh, Nick's getting real zoomed in on there. Better not make any mistakes. This floral is Pretty relaxing to color actually. Everyone's saying how much they love this flower. They're not sure why it stands apart from all the other ones, but they're obsessed with it. Yeah, I I honestly am so obsessed with it too, and I yeah, I don't know why it's different than everything else, but I love it. I come back to it years and years later and still love it. And it does seem like, you know, kind of a lot to color, but it's really not. You just kind of focus on one petal at a time and it moves pretty quickly. Just don't get overwhelmed. Oh, so Mary says she does not own all 100 top sellers, but she does own this one. Yes, this one is a great one. Oh, I make coloring look easy. 
Um, this is one of my all-time favorite stamp sets, as I mentioned before, and so I've colored this stamp probably like 30 times, if I had to guess. 30, 40 times. <laughs> Hopefully I have the hang of it now. I actually made some, um, I don't know if you guys are interested or like into artist trading cards, but we went to an event and I wanted to have some to give to others. And so I actually made some with this stamp. I like partially stamped it on those artist trading cards. Um, it ended up really cool. So that's another idea for this stamp. If you go to events or anything, um, it's just kind of fun to have those little those little trading cards. I have a few that people have sent me or I've traded for. So I'm still just focusing on petal by petal, even though some of these petals are kind of little. Just helps me um, not get so overwhelmed and make sure that I have kind of nice blending throughout. Otherwise, for me, I'd be like all over the top, like I used to do when I was a kid. That's all I still color. Yeah, right. You still color like that, huh? Remember that we had a coloring contest with our kids one day. That was so much fun. It was a uh, monster coloring book, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. And then, like, we could only, so my son is six, and he wanted to, you know, do the rules. And so he was like, you can only have two colors, and um, you can't look at them. You have to, like, blindly pick two colors. And I was like, oh, gosh, like, this is going to be hard for me because I'm so used to having all my colors, all my mediums and stuff. Um, and I can't remember, but mine actually did turn out okay with just the two colors. I think you won the contest. <laughs> did I win? Now I, we should show our drawings. I wonder, I probably threw them. I bet they're in a bin somewhere. I don't feel like I would keep mine. But yeah, and the medium too was like... Crayola um, colored pencils or like I don't even think they were Crayola I think they were just like literally the cheapest watercolors that you could get or not watercolors colored pencils you could get so it was not what I was used to with like these mediums where they're like they blend out so well versus like a really waxy medium that doesn't have a whole lot of pigment so it was a challenge but it was good I remember you had to push so hard on those colored pencils. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're moving on to the next floral here, and I love how this pigment just kind of pulls wherever we put water down. There's some of these like little folds here too, and I just kind of color those solidly. I would love to know, like, if you guys are shopping the bestsellers list, I would love to know which ones you guys have ha or have in your collection. Um, it's always fun to know, like, which stamp sets um, everybody's currently loving. I know styles and stuff change, so it's always changing. All right. So on this little one, I'll do a couple at a time because it won't dry that quick. All right. Yeah, Shannon, it's really easy to kind of get caught up, especially when there's a lot of detail with coloring and get overwhelmed, but especially during live video, I got a live audience here. I got to like talk, make sure I'm not boring you guys. Make sure I'm still coloring. <laughs> but yeah, just one petal at a time. It's kind of like life. <laughs> life lessons with lit. We need something like an alliteration like that starts with W's, but like life lessons. I'm trying to think of one. I, I got nothing. One Neither. petal at a time, though. That should be a sentiment, kid. Oh, you think it should be a sentiment in one? Yep. Right. 
point. I am like very, um, like when I draw or like write too, I always end up like my hand will be um, all filled with pen or pencil lead. And so I have to make sure I keep twisting. Otherwise I'm gonna be smearing this all over. All right, I'm gonna do a couple of these smaller ones together. I'm curious if anyone's picked up these markers since watching you use them. I had a few people message me yesterday asking where, where to get them. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah this is uh, one of my favorite, well, it is like my favorite watercolor medium. Oh, great point. So Julissa just brought up, have you guys checked out the Instagram hop that's happening right now? So we are doing a um, triple brand collaboration Instagram hop. <laughs> that's a lot. But um, if you hop on over to our Unity Instagram page, you can start right there and you're going to see a graphic that's showing um, all of our adhesive transfers and you can just hop along and join in on the fun. There are two gift cards from each company up for grabs. Um, all you have to do is like, like and follow and comment on all of them and you guys, the hop is magical. I did it yesterday when it went live and there's so much beauty and inspiration. Um, I highly recommend checking that out. And tomorrow we will start a YouTube video hop and I will be sharing um, where to start that on the Unity Show and Tell page as well as our Facebook page if you want to join in on that. Um, it is going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited to see all the inspiration and learn some new things. I always learn new things watching videos um, that are created. So I hope that you guys will join us for that too. But in the meantime, go check out that Instagram hop. You are going to be in awe of um, all the new stamp arrivals and these new adhesive transfers in combination. Really, really great. And I love the um, the numbers that we have too. We have a numbers adhesive transfer. That's gonna be really great for anniversaries and birthdays, just making it, it um, so personalized to the recipient. And that's what we are make cards for, right? Make people feel special. And like we were thinking just of them, a card just for them. All right, there's our um, florals all watercolored up so now we're gonna do the centers I'm using just a brown and I'm not gonna blend this one out with water I'm just gonna color my centers just cuz that's what I'm gonna do all right now let's go ahead and do the greenery I don't get too involved with the greenery because it is pretty small. Um, I am basically just going to take and lay some water down over the top of the leaves, grab my pigment, kind of allow that to blend itself a little bit once it hits the water, and then we'll just blend out a little bit to the tip and repeat that process on all of our big leaves first. Oh, I think the other thing I did with this stamp too, which is a fun idea if you're going to any events or you need um, name tags, is I did a, I die cut out a small square. I had this in the background and then um, Nick made me a custom stamp with my name on it um, and I just stamped that right on the top of that and that is what I wore on a lanyard so everybody knew my name and they could see my um, my crafty style so that was really fun too. just emboss your name right over the top all right so now for these smaller bits I am just gonna go in and apply the color directly to those areas. Um, 
Um, these markers, so Brenda's asking what brand of markers these are. These are Karen Pro Brush markers, and you can get them right from the Karen website. It's K-A-R-I-N. I think it might be pronounced Karen. I'm not sure. Do not put it past me to say something wrong. From the Midwest, we say things a certain way, so you just have to call me out if I'm saying something wrong. <laughs> All right, so there is our finished watercolor look. We'll have Nick zoom in on it so you, you can see um, how fun this image turns out. And we're gonna go ahead and put a foiled sentiment on there too using our adhesive transfers um, because I think it's fun and why not? So I think down here would be really fun. Hello friend. Let's do just saying hello. All right, so what I'm gonna do, is there a reason I use a water brush instead of a watercolor paintbrush? Um, nope, it's just personal preference. Um, I will use whatever I have on hand. Uh, this just happens to be like my go-to. I'm liking this size um, brush tip, but I do have a lot of just regular um, paintbrushes I use too. So it's just whatever you prefer and what blends out best for you with the medium that you're using. But for me, this is what I'm loving right now, so this is what I use. I don't really put water inside of mine, although you can. I'm just really heavy-handed, and I know that I'll squish like extra water out because I'm just like high-strung like that, so I just use a little um, water on the side. Anxious girl probs. All right, so I'm just gonna dry this really quick, speed dry it, because with these adhesive transfers, the medium or whatever you're using does need to be dry, otherwise it's not gonna transfer well. And that's gonna go for watercolors or for um, ink blending, anything like that. It's gotta be dry. I'm just focusing kind of on this corner because that's all that really matters right now. It's just going to go over this a little bit. All right. So we're going to grab our Just Saying Hello, and that's from Blooming Friendship. So to use these again, you're going to just peel off the thin backing carefully. We're not going to touch the... Um, black part because that's the adhesive and we're just going to set this right over the top of where we want and then a little sandwich here so I have little plates I bought just for my adhesive transfers because I didn't want to get all the cut marks on there and have that like affect how it would transfer so these are my little my little um, shims just for my adhesive transfers because I die cut a lot. These are new actually. I just got those maybe a couple weeks ago, something like that. All right, so now this will have transferred. Just saying hello. What color foil should we do? Nick, do you want to pick a foil color? Black. Black? I don't have black. Oh, I do have black, but... No, I don't do black. Uh, it's got to be something that matches, too. What about red? Yeah, I was thinking red or this girl's red. I do have a red. Let's see. It's so hard to pick, you guys. Now I can't find my red. Okay, what do I do? What do I do? I just have to decide. I have pick to... a few and... Okay, so for my first one, I did gold shattered glass, and that did turn out really fun as well, and it's one of my favorite foils, so we'll just do it again. I wanted to mix it up, but I think a red or a green would be really pretty on there. I need to find my red foil. All right, so I just sandwiched that back through with our foil on top. And now we're going to be able to see that peel and reveal of our sentiment. Just saying hello. How perfect is that? And here's a negative we can use again. And if you want to know how to do that, you can watch the beginning of this video and I show you how to do that. 
But here is what this one looks like. When it's all done, I went ahead and matted this on some black cardstock, but I love the gold shattered glass on there. Um, Nick can zoom in so you guys can see the detail and how crisp that transfer is of that sentiment. So much fun. And then I want to grab my cards from before so I can share with you what you need to watch on the replay. All right, so this stamp again is a must. Oh, you know what we forgot, you guys? It's not done yet. Don't leave yet. We got to add our text because I love that bit of it. So I'm going to grab this little text stamp from Hug and um, just a gray ink. And with these like text stamps, yes, you can put this in your Misty or on a block or whatever you want, but it's supposed to be mixed media. It's not supposed to be perfect. And so um, I'm not going to use a um, block or anything. I'm just going to put it where I want, like this. And I do this with a lot of different like mixed media style stuff if I create, like I'm not using a block all the time. And you can do second or third generation stamping, but I think it just adds like a really pretty um, detail to the back. So that's what that was. I did not want you guys to not see that part. So that's Hug. I love this. This is one that I used to use a ton and I have kind of forgotten about it, but it is a must have. It's really fun to even stamp something solidly and then put your stamp on top for a little bit of texture. All right, so here's that finished card. We used Hug for our text, and that gorgeous floral is a part of our um, all-time bestsellers, and it's called You Are Forever Beautiful by Angie Blom. If you do not have it, you gotta grab it because look at that, it's so pretty. And then at the beginning of this video, I shared with you guys how to use our adhesive transfers. We transferred no heat foil on some black cardstock in two tones. And then we made a card from the negative too. So you can get two cards from one type of image. Um, so yeah, kind of fun stuff. Um, I had a lot of fun creating these today. I just have so many ideas in my head for these adhesive transfers. Um, Diana is asking, are the toner sheets on our website? Yes, they are. We have the toner sheets in stock as well as a ton of colors of foil. Here's a small selection of like all the colors we have in our shop. This is just how we store ours, but we have lots of different colors. So go ahead and add your favorite colors of foil to um, yeah, and here are the four designs that we have. These are going to be great for birthdays and anniversaries, adding some foiled numbers, um, some really great sentiments for birthdays or general occasions with this one. Here's another one that's going to be great for birthdays, celebratory things like anniversaries, new job, whatever. I love this. Even like a celebrate, I think that would be great for New Year's or like the holiday season. And then this one's just going to be a go-to. I love this one. All colored up, too. I foiled it yesterday. Colored it with Copics. Lots of possibilities with this one. Um, today, we just kind of did a plain Jane one, but I think it's still pretty fun. All right. That is all I had for you guys today. Um, thank you all so much for hanging out with me, and I hope that this helped you and you learned some tips and tricks for foiling and using those negative images. Be sure to check out our amazing sale happening right now. We have up to 60% off stamps. We even have a category of $2.99 stamp sets. Um, so they are really, really inexpensive. You can just grab them and add them to your cart. You will not regret it. Um, and of course, we love to reward you guys for shopping with us. So we have some great freebies too. Those are all linked right at the top of our website. You're going to see free with uh, purchase. You can click in there and see everything that... Um, we have available for uh, free when you hit certain amounts and you do not need a code or anything like that. You don't need to add it to your cart. We're going to automatically toss those goodies into your order um, as long as it's qualifying during shipping. So yeah, that's what I have for today. <laughs> I hope you guys have a great afternoon and I'll see you all again really soon. Bye everybody.